Welcome to this new course on urban air mobility. My name is Fulvio Scarano. I'm a professor of aerodynamics at the Faculty of Aerospace Engineering at Delft University of Technology. Let me guide you through a journey to the future of air mobility. This ProFed course will advance your general and technical knowledge about personal air mobility. We hope you are enthusiastic about this topic as we are and will learn a lot over the next few weeks. The first question you might be asking yourselves is, when we talk about urban air mobility, what do we actually mean concretely? If you search on Wikipedia about what UAM or urban air mobility means, you will read that it concerns urban transportation systems that move people by the air and that such systems are developed as a response to the increasing traffic congestion. If you consult the website of the European Union project on smart cities, you will read that the main goal of urban air mobility is to make use of the airspace as the third dimension by flying vehicles. This is opposed to surface and underground transportation systems currently taking charge of most of the urban mobility. Similar terms are used for personal air mobility and personal air vehicles with meanings similar to urban air mobility. Recently, the term advanced air mobility has also been coming in use. Today's cities, and especially metropolises, develop along a complex urban pattern. They are multi-layered from underground to the road level and further with bridges and viaducts. Imagine not having the valuable assistance of Google Maps. You would easily lose orientation, like you would inside a labyrinth. Escaping it would require a global view of the city, which is possible only from above it. This approach has been imagined more than 2,000 years ago with the myth of Icarus and Daedalus escaping from the Minotaur labyrinth, flying away from it with walks made wings. So the concept of freedom through a third dimension was already envisioned at that time. Why is the topic of urban air mobility growing so rapidly? Let us look together at some demography statistics. The percentage of world population that lives in the city keeps increasing. Take the more developed countries. Cities in 2007 already accounted for three quarters of their total population. In 2030, the percentage will increase to 80%. In less developed countries, like for instance on the African continent, less people live in cities, but urbanization is growing even more steeply there. With such a rate of urbanization, the mobility in large metropolitan regions faces important challenges. Traffic capacity is among the most recognized problem in metropolises. The need for mobility exceeds the road and underground capacity on a daily basis. As a result, transport saturates during peak hours with a drop in mobility. Maintaining a good traveling speed for cars makes the urban environment particularly dangerous, especially when road traffic interacts with cyclists and pedestrians. Safety remains a challenge in urban surface mobility. Internal combustion engines are responsible for aggravating air pollution in large cities. The limits suggested by the public health organization are frequently exceeded. This is a clear signal that a sustainable development of urbanization cannot be based on the massive use of cars, certainly not with internal combustion. Last but not least, the large amount of people in need of transport also involves labor. Autonomous vehicles are nowadays appearing that replace the pilot by an intelligent system. The very diverse events occurring during surface mobility pose incredible challenges to the safe deployment of autopilots. The use of airspace above densely populated areas is already routinely taken up by helicopters. Emergency services like ambulance and police intervention make use of helicopters in big metropolises like in New York and Sao Paulo. In addition, the deployment of vehicles that fly electrically yet unmanned, has begun with drone services for reconnaissance, package delivery, and recently Delft University of Technology has demonstrated the use of a drone ambulance to transport first aid equipment where an accident has occurred. Urban air mobility can be split into three domains. First, the vehicle that performs the flight transport. For this domain, you need to know about flight controls, aerodynamics, propulsion, aeroacoustic structures and materials, etc. Second, the specific mission accomplished by the flight. For this domain, you can imagine a variety of missions. The most obvious ones are air taxi flights or air ambulance flights, 
but the services that can be deployed will probably expand as soon as UAM become operational. Third, different from conventional aviation that connects from one airport to the other, UAM vehicles connect to vertiports that need to be integrated in the urban or suburban environment. Air traffic management is a crucial aspect for UAM. The topic that you see typed in black are actually dealt with in the course. Those in blue are relevant to, but they are not expanded on in the course. Nevertheless, they are partly covered with the additional reading material. Let's look at UAM vehicles in more details now. I will give you a first classification of UAM vehicles by their propulsion configuration. This classification follows the definitions proposed recently by Rosin and Bussing from NLR. A first class of vehicles is the multi-rotor class. This configuration sees a large number of small rotors with fixed vertical axes which provide the lift force and can be controlled for vehicle stability. In essence, these vehicles can be regarded as an upscaled version of the drones that can be nowadays purchased in a shop. Given their simple architecture, it does not surprise that these systems are the most developed stage among all categories. For instance, flights with people on board are now performed routinely with these vehicles. The Volocopter is a multi-rotor with propellers above the fuselage. The rotors are connected through a network structure. It uses electrical engine powered on batteries and the vehicle is piloted. The Hihang 184 comprises four sets of contra-rotating propellers installed at level below the fuselage. The rotors are also moved by electric motors and powered with lithium batteries. The vehicle has no pilot and the flight is controlled by a ground station. A second class of vehicles is the dual phase class. In this case, the vertical flight phase is covered with vertical axis rotors. These vehicles are featured with a fixed wing that is able to produce some lift when in forward flight. The thrust for the forward flight is produced by an additional rotor with horizontal axis. The Kitty Hawk Cora is similar to a small aircraft with limited wingspan and with a high boom tail. 12 small rotors provide the lift needed for vertical takeoff and landing. One single large propeller is mounted behind the fuselage, providing thrust. The vehicle is intended to fly autonomously. The John Rosa makes use of a single large rotor, similar to a helicopter, ahead of the fuselage. This rotor is powered during vertical flight. Four large electric props provide the thrust for horizontal flight, where the lift is then given with the top rotor in auto gyro. The PAL-V is a vehicle at an advanced stage of development. It relies on a propeller for thrust and the auto gyro becomes active in forward flight. The vehicle requires a short track for takeoff. It is powered by an IC engine and is piloted. Thanks to some efficient lift generation by wings or autogyro, dual-phase vehicles provide a longer range than multi-rotor vehicles. The third and more sophisticated category of vehicles is that of the tilt rotors. These vehicles make use of the same propulsion systems for vertical as well as forward flight. This is achieved by placing the rotors with vertical axis at takeoff and landing, then the vehicle will gently transition towards forward flight by rotating or tilting the rotors to produce the necessary thrust. During forward flight, a large portion of lift is given by multiple wings. The Bahana concept from Airbus features eight electric props mounted ahead of two staggered wings. The vehicle is powered on batteries and is self-piloted. The Lilium jet makes use of 36 compact ducted fans arranged on a larger rear wing and a smaller front wing. The Lilium jet is powered on batteries and is intended to be piloted. Tilt rotors potentially offer further range than dual phase vehicles as they do not feature separate propulsion units for vertical and forward flight. Moreover, the shape of tilt rotors can be optimized for better aerodynamic performance. Tilt rotors, however, are more complex to control 
and development is not as advanced yet as that of multi-rotors. We can now introduce a vehicle classification based on the level of satisfaction of requirements. Such requirements are mostly related to performance. Some of them are typical requirements used in aeronautics, like range, speed, and payload. Others, like versatility and size, are specifically relevant for the use in the urban environment. Finally, the power requirement is important in relation to the footprint of the vehicle in terms of gas and noise emissions. I will end this lecture with an outline of the course. The first module will continue with a more detailed approach to vehicle classification and elements of eco-friendly vehicle design. The second module goes more into depth. It is split into two parts. Part A covers aerodynamics or acoustics of propellers as well as power systems. Path B covers controlling stability, air traffic management and elements of urban integration. You'll be able to pick the path you want to focus on this course. This concludes this lecture. Thank you for watching and enjoy the course.